So we're learning a couple things about George Brockler. George Brockler is not a principled man. He doesn't believe in the Second Amendment based on the principle of it. He will go after some gun suppliers, but he doesn't go after other gun suppliers. He's an opportunist. He uh, is a fascist, right? He's an opportunist. When Ted Nugent, a famous chomo, a child molester, endorsed him, he embraced that uh, endorsement. He loved that endorsement. He couldn't. It didn't matter who Ted Nugent was. He could get a lot of uh, people at his shows. He could draw a crowd. So therefore, George Brockler, being the opportunist that he is. Uh, embraces Ted Nugent. He uh, says he's pro Second Amendment, but the opportunity arised and he went after Marky e. Maines and Philip Duran in the Columbine shooting case. He actually brags that he was the only person to get a felony conviction with the Columbine shooting case. So, who was Mark E. Maines and who was Philip Duran? Mark E. Maines buys the Tech 9, the automatic pistol for Eric Harris. No, for uh, Dylan Klebold. Dylan Klebold is the one that had the Tech 9. And uh, Philip Duran was just the guy who had them to meet. So Philip Duran had Mark E. Maines and uh, Klebold and Harris. They met. And then in the tape that the Columbine shooters had released, they thanked them over and over again. So that might have been the biggest mistake was just how... Uh, thankful they were of Maines and Philip Durant. So they're thanking them a whole bunch, you know, name dropping them. And, um, you know, eventually Maines pleads guilty to providing a handgun to a minor, possession of a sawed off shotgun. And then that la latter charge stems from the evidence that Maines shot an illegal uh, sawed off shotgun with Harris and Klebold. And then that's it. So it was like, hey, remember when you went to the shooting range and you shot that, you know, shotgun? That's what you're going to go to jail for six years for. Dylan and Eric were very clear in that tape that they were acting alone, that nobody knew what they were planning whatsoever. Klebold looked directly into the camera and said, let me tell you this much. They had no clue, so don't blame them and arrest them for what we did. So, you know, they're flat out telling you that they had nothing to do with it whatsoever. They uh, were able to acquire the weapon through charm, through charisma, through whatever means. And then once they got the weapons, you know, nobody gave them the weapons to do this Columbine massacre at all. But we're going to go after Maines and Philip Duran, but we're not going to go after Robin Anderson, who provided 75% of the weapons, all the weapons of Eric Harris. Eric Harris kills eight. And then she also provided the shotgun for Klebold, which was her boyfriend who took her to prom. So there's a big inconsistency here. There's a huge inconsistency. James Taylor was a Denver police officer who shot one of the kids. James Taylor, he didn't go get any charges whatsoever. He started lying, too. So he's committing perjury. He shot and killed a kid. James Taylor didn't get in trouble. Eventually, he gets fired from his job, but that's because he started lying about it. But he shot one of the kids. Now, people are going to, you know, if you're being reasonable, it was an accident. There's this high, uh, intense situation, and he tried to shoot one of the shooters but missed and wound up shooting the kid, you know, the kid that had already been shot by both of them also. And then eventually that kid dies, that uh, Roarbow. So Roarbow eventually dies, you know, uh, with three different people's bullets in his body, including a Denver police officer. So if we're being serious about going after the gun suppliers, since Marky e. Maines supplied the gun to a minor, technically, right? And then Philip Duran. And we're not just going after the gun suppliers. We're going after the people who would meet the uh, uh, sick monsters who kill and shoot. We're going to go after them. The people that have these monsters meet the gun suppliers. So James Holmes buys his gun at Bass Pro Shops. Well, how did he get the Bass Pro Shops? Well, he probably drove a car, right? We could probably sue that car manufacturer for arranging that meeting. Philip Duran, his only crime was arranging the meeting. And he also had, you know, a weapon that he wasn't supposed to have. This was before the assault rifles ban was let up in 2004. So for having uh, a weapon he's not allowed to have and for arranging that meeting. So the, his gun possession has nothing to do with Columbine. The only thing that his involvement with the Columbine massacre was he set up the meeting for Marky e. Maines and Dylan Klebold.
Well, Robin Anderson didn't have to set the meeting up. She was with them. She takes them to the Tanner Gun Show. She buys these guns at a gun show. And then it's a straw purchase. So she's of 18. She's of age. She's allowed to buy this stuff. She buys it and then hands it off to them. And so, you know, that's where they got 75% of all their guns came from her. But again, they said they, you know, they take all the blame. We did this. They did it. Uh, people shoot people, not guns shoot people. They were the evil, sick monsters. They're saying, put it on us. So the trial of Marky e. Maines and the trial of Philip Duran, I don't believe was a trial. It was an inquisition. It was bloodlust. It was a kangaroo court, a show trial. It actually never became a show trial because they accepted the plea bargains. Now, uh, then, then what about the cop, right? Where did he get his guns? If we we could take this into uh, this slippery slope, can be taken into ridiculous land, right? So who supplied uh, James Holmes with his guns? Who arranged that meeting for James Holmes and his gun suppliers? He went to Bass Pro Shops. He went to or Pro Bass Shops. Pro, Bass Pro Pro Bass. I don't know. One of those two, either Pro Bass or Bass Pro. And then he also went to the Gander Mountain Store, one in Thornton, Colorado, and then another in Aurora. So he goes to the Gander Mountain Gun Store. So the Gander Mountain Gun Store should have been convicted by George Brockler, the, uh, both of them in Thornton and in Aurora. And then the Bass Pro Shops should have been convicted too for supplying him of his weapons. But the law actually says that if you apply and you don't have any felonies and there's no restrictions that you have to sell that gun to them. So, you know, I, that's why I think as a principle that you don't go after the gun suppliers unless it's just like ridiculous, unless the Bass Pro Shops is like knocking on the door and they're handing the guns and then they're saying, here's the plot, here's the thing, they pay them and they're all about you know, organizing and plotting the massacre. If they didn't do that, if they just sold the weapon, and there's laws on the books right now. If you buy two handguns in five days, then that tips off to the feds. The feds, you know, knows about something like that. So there's already laws on the books or whatever about, you know, all these different purchases. It's just that there's, there's a lack of consistency. He's not principled. He will go after the poor gun suppliers Whenever there's a case and he needs to go after somebody just to, you know, cure the bloodlust of the public. So, George Brockler didn't have James Taylor arrested, nor did he have his gun suppliers, the Denver police officer who shot the kid. He didn't go after Bass Pro Shops. He didn't go after the Gunder, uh, Gander Mountain Stores, which I agree. He shouldn't actually go with any of the uh, gun suppliers. So, I don't see how we could say that James Holmes getting all his guns legally is better than what the Columbine kids did. Uh, the, or the 18, one was an 18 year old, right? So one, uh, was of age. So I'm not for sure why he's having to get, maybe he wasn't of age at the time in December when, uh, Robin Anderson bought all their guns. But it just, uh, with Robin Anderson versus Marky e. Maines, they're essentially in the same fucking position, only she bought way more and she didn't get in trouble. And, you know, some people might say, well, that's usually what states do. They'll give one, you know, of the criminals immunity to testify against everybody else. Yeah, well, you went after the small fucking person, the small fry. You didn't catch the big fish. You gave the big criminal, the big gun supplier immunity and went after the other ones. When, I, personally, I don't think Mark E. Maines or Philip Duran or Robin Anderson should have gotten in trouble for any of this. Uh, they provided weapons they weren't supposed to, but we're, you know, we're America. So, um... You know, the lack of consistency is fucking bullshit. And then he also fucked up, uh, you know, he bungled this um, James Holmes case, too. He bungled it. So let's talk about James Holmes a little bit. So James Holmes, he bought all of his guns legally between May 22nd and July 6th. So a month prior to the shooting. At three different Colorado gun stores, the Bass Pro Shops and two Gander Mountain stores, James Holmes purchased a Smith & Wesson, a, a two two three semi-automatic rifle at the Gander Mountain store, Thornton, Colorado. Colorado. He also bought a forty caliber Glock pistol at the Gander Mountain gun store in Aurora, Colorado. Another forty caliber Glock handgun and a Winchester or Remington 870 shotgun was purchased at Bass Pro Shops in Denver. Colorado. He was also wearing full body armor, wearing a gas mask. 
Where did he get those at? He entered the Century 16th. Century 16 Theater through a fire exit, and then he threw two gas canisters into the audience, and then he opened fire on the audience, hitting 79 people, and 12 of them were killed. So he injured 79, 12 of them were killed, the semi-automatic rifle, shotgun, and one of the pistols were used during the massacre. So how did he get his weapons? James Holmes just went into Bass Pro Shops in Northfield. And he walked out with a Glock handgun and an 870 Winchester shotgun. He passed a CBI and an FBI background test, background check. And as Holmes, who has just a traffic offense on an otherwise spotless criminal record. So he had a traffic offense. So if you were selling guns to James Holmes, you were required to give him guns. So what, you know, completely different standards we have when it comes to James Holmes. Versus how they treated Philip Durant, who just met, he just arranged the meeting. That was all he did. He arranged the fucking meeting, and that's all he did. So, the background check at the Bass Pro Shops was passed. It was required by federal law, but he it was properly conducted, and he was approved. James Holmes bought the third weapon, a semi-automatic AR-15 assault rifle at the Gander Mountain Store in Aurora, just a mile from the movie theater. He passed a background check there, too. He also passed, uh, purchased 6,000 rounds of ammunition over the Internet. He was also decked out in all black with Kevlar ha helmet, gas mask, tactical bullet-resistant vest, bulletproof leggings and neck, and groin, groin protector and special tactical gloves. If he's not a felon, if he's of age and there's no indication that he's mentally ill, then the sheriff must give him a permit. So this is a permit for carried concealed. They have to give you the guns. They have to give you a permit, right? So this is because of Colorado's shall issue law. So if uh, Klebold would have waited six months and he would have bought the guns the same time that the Aurora shooter did, then Mark E. Mains would have been forced to have sold it to him. No, you have to sell it to him, Mark. He's not a criminal. You must sell it to him. You know, you have to sell it to them. But, you know, two different, I mean, it's like weird, man. Different place, different people, different time. And uh, they take these two different cases totally different. So Denver, they have a law that forbids assault rifles, but not Aurora. Aurora had no such law. So the assault weapon that James Holmes used in that theater was legal too. Every bit of all the... Guns and weapons that James Holmes used was legal, and the Gander Mountain Store and the Bass Pro Shops were legally obligated to give him those weapons. You must give James, all the James Holmes war of the world, their weapons if they have nothing on their record indicating that they're going to do something bad. So that's uh, the exact opposite of what we saw with Mark E. Mains and Philip Duran. The exact opposite. How did he bungle the death penalty? So James Holmes, it would be, you know, the Columbine shooters killed themselves. But if they didn't kill themselves, J uh, George Brockler wouldn't have got been able to get the death penalty for them either. He bungled this case, and I think he bungled this case because he added all this extra legalese. He had all this extra legalese bullshit. So let's bring it home to what James Holmes did, right? He just goes into a theater and he just shoots a whole bunch of people. Some people say, well, he didn't intend to murder the children. He didn't give a shit if he did murder children. He wanted to kill lots of people. He should have been charged with 12 murders, all those, you know, attempted murders, and terrorism. And, that, and that's it, right? So here's exactly what he did. He murdered, you know, you could have just put one of those uh, murders up. The kid, the six-year-old kid who gets shot, Veronica Moser Sullivan. He murdered Veronica Moser Sullivan. That's why he needs to die. Just one six-year-old, that's all you needed. But he just goes above and beyond. So James Holmes is eventually going to be declared guilty of 24 counts of first-degree murder. So 24 counts of first-degree murder, which doesn't even make any sense since there was 12 bodies. But that's what Brockler got. 24 counts of first-degree murder. Guilty. And then 140 counts of attempted first-degree murder. Guilty. One count of possessing illegal explosives. Guilty. And then an enhancement charge of a crime of violence. <laughs> what? So it's like, you murdered that person, you murdered that person. It was terrorism, attempted murder, and just all this carnage and bloodshed. And then also, 
Well, what about this charge of a crime of violence? Huh? There was violence used, and it was criminal violence. That's an enhancement charge. I mean, basically, they add all these enhancement charges. They have all this legalese bullshit. And they get all twisted and inside people's fucking heads and minds and shit. When really, it's very simple. You know, it's uh, 12 people were murdered. 12 people were killed. Here is the 12 counts. Now, put them to death for the one death for the six-year-old girl that died. James Holmes deserves to die. But because James Holmes deserved to die, and he didn't get the death penalty because one jury held out, one female juror held out, then he wound up getting a whole bunch of life sentences, but his life was spared. Since his life was spared after this case, people are saying in Colorado the death penalty is dead and gone. How can you kill anybody else who had a lot less, uh, you know, heinous crime, killed one or two people, and you're going to put them to death because they're poor and black, but then James Holmes, he went through the process, and then that juror spared his life. So the argument is George Brockler is the reason why we won't have the death penalty in Colorado. Some of his uh, opposition might say something like that, and it's true inadvertently, but if he was the governor, he would be killing people left and right. He would have such a high body count, the amount of people that... George Brocker would kill if he was governor. It would be higher than the body count of the Columbine shooters and the Aurora shooter combined. So he would go ahead and I guess he wants to, you know, try to be the... I don't know. I guess he wants higher body counts than those fucking psychos. Uh, so uh, here's, here's what happened. So with the Veronica Moser Sullivan, he was interviewing the mother on the stand. Ashley Moser. Ashley Moser is a survivor from that July 20th, 2012 shooting at a dark night screening five years ago in Aurora, Colorado, a city which has not consolidated her government with Arapahoe, Adams, nor Douglas County because they love spending taxes on inefficient, redundant services. So it happened July 20th, 2012. Ashley Moser. She's pregnant. Ashley Moser is pregnant, and she's got a six-year-old girl with her. James Holmes shot her, and he shot her six-year-old daughter, Veronica Moser Sullivan, killing her. And he paralyzed the mother. And then Ashley Moser also lost the baby she was carrying. She was pregnant. So Ashley Moser lost two kids that day. The kid that was in her stomach, and then the six-year-old daughter. The full-blown child who was out of the womb for six years. A six-year-old girl, Veronica Moser Sullivan, R.I.P. Veronica Moser Sullivan, six-year-old girl, probably didn't even see it coming, and then has a horrendous end to her life. So, fuck James Holmes, fuck James Holmes, James Holmes deserves to die. When they asked Ashley Moser how has the shooting affected her, she's like, I'm lost, I don't know who I am anymore, I'm not a mom anymore. So I don't know how much more of a heinous crime one has to commit in order to get the death penalty. But in Colorado, that's why they're saying that, you know, death penalty is dead because he could not get James Holmes dead. And so that could be bad or good. Uh, I respect that. That means if you're against the death penalty, you're more to the left of me on that issue. And that's okay. Um, one female juror held out. And if she held out because she just couldn't have the a death on her conscience then, you know, the government should serve as the example. And it is a barbaric thing to do. So one female juror, she's the one that should be given credit for single-handedly ending the death penalty in Colorado. So uh, George Brockler, if he gets in there, I'm sure he'll rectify that and be putting everybody to death left and right. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, there's people that's getting shot on the streets. There's people that's, there's already two people that's already died in Pueblo jails, Pueblo County jails. Two people have died this year. Uh, there's been hundreds that have died throughout the years in Colorado just in the recent years. So it's, you know, I'm sure there's, um, there's the death penalty, even though we can't legally use it, the cops and the jailers are able to kill the, the undesirables in other ways. So they are getting away with killing them. Perhaps having the death penalty would be the safety valve that we would need in order for these extra legal killings not to happen. Uh, I don't know, but here's the problem that I think, Why? how did he bungle this, okay? I think it was all that legalese. James Holmes, a trial cost Coloradans $3 million. So you have George Brockler, he's got $3 million, he's putting on this case, 
you know, he, he had uh, lots of evidence, right? So here's, let's see, some of the stats here. He, um, uh, he had 300 witnesses, and he had 3,000 pieces of evidence. George Brockler did. $3 million, 300 witnesses, 3,000 pieces of evidence. Well, shit. He over-argued his case. He made them jurors sit on the fucking, you know, in that room over and over again and take a look at this shit. And then they thought about it and thought about it. And then eventually, you know, if they would have been convinced, he over-explained. And then it was too much. He over-argued his case. I don't, why didn't they even charge him with terrorism? Charge him with fucking terrorism, right? 2012, the war on terror has been going. That's what he did was fucking terrorism. All right, if a, a jihadi went into a theater and killed a bunch of innocent people, I guarantee you that person would be fried today. So he should have had a terrorist charge, 12 murders on him, and then that would have been it. Very simple. He murdered people. He deserves to die. He's a terrorist. What fucking benefit could you say? This is a carnage. He was uh, conscious, and it might be evil, and you might say it's crazy to do evil shit. No, I think he enjoyed it. He was competent. He knew what the fuck he was doing. He deserves to die. James Holmes deserves to die. So, what was his punishment, right? That he gets guilty, 24 counts of first-degree murder, 140 counts of attempted first-degree murder, one count of possessing illegal explosives, and he's guilty of a crime of violence. Oh, that crime of violence was going to push him over the edge, right, George Brockler? Is that why you added that charge onto it? Well, you confuse the fucking jury, okay? He's given 12 life sentences on August 26, 2015, three years later, so that's not really a quick and speedy trial, it took three years to not get him the death penalty, it got, you know, three million dollars, and 300 witnesses, 3,000 pieces of evidence, for him not to get the death penalty, in, uh, in 12 lifetimes, 12 lifetimes, he got a 12 lifetime sentence, so, once he outlives his life one time, then 11 more times that he outlives his life. I mean, one life sentence is all you need. What the fuck do you need 12 life sentences for? I guess that's just to make sure he doesn't get paroled out. He never leaves. And then he got, uh, in addition to 12 life sentences, so he already has a ridiculous amount of time. He's got 12.